Evening, it's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets end of day for Wednesday, the uh, 14th of December 2016. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal, signals and market updates from uh, leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, in terms of uh, market numbers, uh, finishing for the day, let's just bring them up for you. As we know, Asian markets certainly weaker overnight. No follow through in terms of um, the um, the U.S. markets euphoria, uh, led by the Nasdaq primarily because of this potential uh, meeting with Trump and uh, the uh, the tech city, okay, and Nasdaq city. So, so again, uh, certainly being held up pretty well thus far on the Nasdaq. So certainly something brewing there that's certainly helping the Nasdaq to remain afloat. European markets all finished negative. FTSE down 20 points. DAX down 40 points. CAC minus 35. The FTSE mid was down 1% today as well, along with the Euro stocks and the IBEX too. So certainly weakness. Uh, weakness certainly being felt. Okay, and that's multiple reasons. One, obviously, Asian markets certainly weaker overnight. Number two, weak economic data from the European Union. Industrial production on the weaker side. Okay. The other bearish arguments really were Moody's uh, flagging of the Italian banking system uh, certainly some concerns being raised again as we already know they have been dormant uh, french inflation numbers certainly coming in on the better well not better but basically coming in line not negative so again uh, supports the argument for tapering okay so we had some comments with regards to tapering in the last 24 hours and therefore that's net net negative for uh, european markets as the euro remains afloat chinese japan have just have discussed that already uh, let's have a look. U.S. mortgage application certainly on the weaker side. We've had uh, concerns with regards to China as well now, with regards to the Taiwan situation. Again, geopolitical uncertainty increasing. Uh, Ford GM potentially going to get some sort of tax uh, to uh, as a as a form of retribution. Okay, so again, certainly negative. Uh, U.S. inflation data came in stronger. Retail sales weaker. U.S. manufacturing and industrial production all came in weaker as well. That certainly weighed on sentiment. Okay. Greece, no breakthrough, bond yields start to spike, and the Greek market's down, I think, in excess of 2%. So, again, uh, certainly yeah, a lot of headwinds there, okay, and uh, again, preventing equity markets from uh, moving higher. So, if you take all that on board, certainly some cause for concern. Okay, now, in terms of the major uh, risk event, really, is the FOMC, okay, Fed, and it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens there. Now, if Miss Yellen isn't as hawkish as we all expect, then we all know what's going to be happening to the euro, okay? The euro is going to spike. If the euro spikes, then that's net net negative for European equities, okay? So again, uh, it certainly feeds through into that tapering argument, okay? Let's look at the technical picture here. German DAX weekly chart. Volume certainly isn't in on the increase, uh, okay? Uh, sell it, sell off today was more or less equal to yesterday's uh, up volume day. So again, not, not exactly much conviction on the upside from my perspective 60 minute chart now starting to show some signs of exhaustion looks like the next potential stop is 11 150 now okay going over to the 10 minute chart on the german dax again showing weakness and from my understanding what i can see here early is a hns formation folks okay so a hns formation certainly is considered to be bearish and the only way with this hns formation can be triggered is if the uh, the euro starts to spike and the only way the euro can spike is if miss yellen isn't as as hawkish as everybody else makes it out to be or everybody's expecting and if she's not as hawkish then that obviously kills the reflation trade as well so bear in mind the reflation trade tr certainly to keep that on board as well keep them back of your mind be interested to see what happens now the uh, german dax closed the uh, gap fill gap fill was closed around the 11280 zone and certainly did help hold us resistance 11280 held a double top and then we flushed towards a close okay so again should be interesting now we do have this diagonal trend line I mean, it's not exactly very strong we have one two three points but for now once that breaks then you do have this potential gap fill area down here 11190 so watch out for that zone okay 11190 you have another area at 11 to 10 certainly uh, an important zone in terms of a uh, potential reaction so again look for strength and weakness there okay let's move over to the uh, the actual actually before i do just need to give you a highlight of the mdax the MDAX on the daily chart is showing you that it's into resistance and therefore is weak, okay? And therefore indicating that the German DAX will fall. The tech all share also confirming resistance and indicating weakness and therefore confirming to you that the NASDAQ will certainly fall as well. Just thinking out loudly at present, okay? So buy a certainly negative on the NASDAQ, although 
Again, Mr. Trump does hold a wild card if, if he brings out something that's going to help the tech sector, etc. Uh, obviously, some sort of tax cut or some sort of loophole. Uh, again, that's going to be interesting and uh, that will send the, uh, the Nasdaq higher. Regardless, so bear that in mind. If we start to flush here on the French CAC, then you do have support around the 4750 zone. The unfilled gap has been left of open above, so therefore the French CAC certainly is, certainly is showing weakness. 60 minute chart certainly is showing weakness again on the daily chart as well. It's an inside bar, but we are looking to uh, hold a resistance thus far. And uh, the volume on the sell side certainly was higher as well. Okay, now in terms of the FTSE 100, the FTSE 100 certainly has held that gap level all day. Uh, 6968 once it closed that gap more well, basically once it re revisited that gap okay uh, certainly has held that level all day a whole hell gap fill now there is a, there are a lot of arguments here for the FTSE mm. we had punch taverns obviously takeover bid setting the stock 35 percent higher we had micro focus if i can remember yeah micro focus up four percent on an earnings call but car phone warehouse certainly uh, dragging the index okay certainly dragging the index with regards to Brexit uncertainty going forward. So again, pros and cons there. In terms of economic data, we did have some strong data on uh, average hourly earnings, certainly on the positive side, although inflation uh, certainly uh, was, uh, uh, was has been on the increase as well. But if average hourly earnings are obviously matching inflation, then it certainly does help the cause along with the unemployment numbers falling as well for the FTSE. So fundamentally, pretty sound, okay? Fundamentally pretty sound. Although car phone warehouse was dragging it down, also Chinese data out or China, Chinese equity market certainly lower overnight as well. Certainly was hurting the FTSE 100. Oil prices certainly have held resistance as well, which I'm not going to go into for now, but certainly all indicating weakness. Now, from my perspective, even after today's economic data and today's price action, we've still held double top. Okay, so from a 60 minute chart perspective, we're certainly holding double top and therefore it's considered to be bearish. Okay. That's my understanding and my interpretation. So double top and you drop. Okay, very clear. Keep it simple. And that certainly seems to be the status quo at present for the FTSE 100. Although having looking at a larger time frame. The larger time frame does show you that you are still consolidating within the bullish engulfing candle that was registered yesterday, led by the NASDAQ. It'll be interesting to see if we can follow through. Again, Miss Yellen will dictate the main movements. Now, the weekly candle here as well in the FTSE, I think, is very important. We've certainly held this red candle on multiple occasions. We had this topping tail sell-off as well. Obviously, doji sell-off today as well. So, again, this red candle certainly is very important. If we negate this red candle and the bulls regain control, then you could certainly see 7120 being revisited for the FTSE 100. So, all these uh, all these uh, potential levels do matter and are quite important. Okay, in terms of the uh, euro stocks, let's look at the euro stocks. Last but not least, okay. So euro stocks daily chart inside bar, so nothing overtly bearish. So bear that in mind. Okay, so don't get uh, obviously uh, addicted to the downside here. Just be open minded. The markets can continue to be irrational and logical longer than me and you, or anybody else for that matter can remain solvent. So bear that in mind. Okay, that famous quote. Daily chart, again, like I said, inside bar, 60 minute chart at the moment, showing some signs of exhaustion. Or alternatively, it could just be a healthy pullback for more buyers to enter. Okay, so again, the unfilled gap has been left open at 3236. So again, indicating weakness given the fact that we were unable to close that gap. We did trigger this HS formation, so left shoulder here, head. Obviously, right shoulder down we go. So the pivot high was 3240. Uh, neckline was 3220 so you're looking at a 20 point move we have hit 3209 we failed to test that to zone below at 3205 but good enough okay good enough 3240 3220 so again looking for move lower okay so um, again you have support on the euro stocks at 3205 if you fail then you go down to 3190 again the emphasis is on yellen okay and it'll be, it'll be interesting as to what she will um, which she will do again that's shortly around seven o'clock i think it's the time if i can recollect correctly fomc is seven o'clock that's correct okay so again all eyes on yellen in terms of the next market direction but there are ample forces sending this market lower number one greece concerns two china concerns and taiwan okay and uh, the scenario with regards to trump courting the taiwanese okay so again that's certainly going to be interesting and the retaliation from China and the potential trade war looming there as well could hurt economic growth. 
Again, we'll see exactly what Mr. Trump has uh, has up his sleeve with regards to the tech sector. Uh, and again, that will be important too. On that note, wish you well. Please be sure to visit CFTs.com for your trading needs. Goodbye now.